think that you know boycotting another community or state um, you know is, is not the spirit of uh, U.S. economic policy and the kind of cooperation states have to have and you know you're not getting to affect the law by boycotting us you're only affecting innocent people and innocent businesses that may not agree with the law or have nothing to do with the law. Uh, you know, uh, Arizona, about 40 percent of our workforce is Hispanic, about 33 percent of Arizona is Hispanic. There are 50,000 Latino-owned businesses in Arizona, and most of those are in service sector industries. So there's no question the people that will be hurt by this constituency-wide will be Hispanic families and then small business owners. And most people that are running a small business are not paying attention to public policy. They're just trying to keep their head above water in a very tough recession. Uh, you know, candidly, and I think they are having some effect, uh, you know, in so much as uh, the intent of the boycott is to bring harm to Arizona. You know, elements of the boycott and the boycott campaign have been harmful. Um, has the boycotts caused Arizona public officials or leaders to revisit the immigration law? Absolutely not. Um, and they're not going to revisit that law. And the boycotts are going to be less effective over time, and the law is going to remain in place. And, uh, you know, so I think the boycotts are not having an intended effect as far as a desired outcome. Um, well, I met with the, some San Francisco city officials and chief of staff, and you know, San Francisco is a great example of a city that's done a lot of firsts in civil rights and um, has been a trendsetter in civil rights in some cases. But, you know, the congresswoman from San Francisco is the Speaker of the House, and she's already said this issue is too controversial for her to take up. And so, you know, communities like San Francisco that have important congressional leadership, you know, could be playing a pivotal role and getting national immigration reform moving in Washington, D.C., which is really the only way this can take place. So if you add, you know, Los Angeles and Boston and Seattle you know, and uh, other parts of the country, you could start to build a coalition of people that would have dialogue around border security and immigration reform. And instead, you know, you're having a diatribe, not a dialogue, and the diatribe is polarizing and it's distracting people from the issue. It's making people focus on boycotts or making people like in Arizona focus on defending their position economically, not thinking about a solution. And so I think the boycotts have taken the debate in the wrong direction. It's going to create some long-lasting hard feelings towards communities that shouldn't be there. I think they're hypocritical, they're judgmental, and I don't know any, any I can't think of any great movement in American history whose backbone was hypocrisy and judgment. You know, when I think of the civil rights movement in the 50s and 60s, you know, I think of, of education and I think of enlightenment and I think of bridge building. And I also think in terms of the discussion being productive and focused on the issue. And I don't see that in immigration and the boycotts are going to exasperate the derailing of the debate in the United States. We're asking people to uh, not target innocent working families and businesses with this boycott. Uh, we're also using it as an opportunity to try and increase discussion with people about what's the right thing to do about immigration nationally because it's not the job of the state of Arizona to set immigration policy. But the people whose job it is, Speaker of the House, President of the Senate, President of the United States, and Washington, D.C., they're not doing their job. So in the absence of that, states are going to backfill that. So, you know, let's, let's put the dialogue out front. Let's stop the, you know, the false di diatribe on boycotts. And let's start trying to ask ourselves a question, and that is, you know, what do you do about 12 million people that are here in a non-documented, illegal fashion? What do you do about border security in the United States? What do you do to protect the human rights of Hispanic families because, you know, leaving them in limbo without a fair and equitable immigration policy is, you know, setting the tone for the human rights concerns that people are, are talking about. And, uh, you know, how do, we, how do we fix this problem and how do we move the country forward? How do, we, how do we promote a fair and intelligent immigration policy that's good for every American 
and good for people that want to be Americans. I'm glad that there's people out there that still dream about being Americans. You know, I'm proud of my country and proud of the fact that people want to come here and live here and become American citizens. And we know from our own economic models at GPAC that, you know, if you're not a state that's gaining in population and gaining in young people, you're going to die economically. So the immigration movement to Arizona, even though it's created some problems, has created some strengths too. You know, 20 percent of our workforce are immigrants in Arizona. Uh, you know, 30 plus billion dollars of economic output by the immigrant class in Arizona. And we have great tradition with Hispanic leaders and families that we're all very proud of in Arizona.